Thursday. Happy Thursday. We've had an eventful week in Bundaberg. I hope that hasn't been too eventful for you if you're a local person. Thankfully, no damage has happened to our house. Um, but I know a lot of people are without power and just inconvenient stuff, but everyone is safe. That's the most important thing with those crazy storms that happened. So today is Thursday, which is a happy work day, quietly painting away here. And I thought I'd show you a bit of fusion mineral paint. So this is, um, I think you say ly lichen. I don't know, I liken it, whatever the color is. So it's almost, I don't know, it's almost got a little bit of a greeny kind of, greeny gray. It's a beautiful color. And the reason why I went with it is because these bedsides are really quite grand and regal and I thought I needed a grand and regal kind of color for them. So this is the first coat that I did. So with um, both the paint products that I stocked, Fusion Mineral Paint and Sweet Pickens Milk Paint, a quick light sand and a good clean and most the, most um, circumstances, most pieces of furniture, that's all you need to do. So yesterday I applied one coat of paint on here and I let it dry overnight. So because I'm selling these and because I'm painting the top, I wanted to make sure that they had a really good curing time overnight and I'm ready to do the second coat. So I have done the second coat on this one here and it's looking all beautiful and smooth and I will be showing you today how to apply the second coat and on that other one how to lightly distress because I know a lot of people stress about distressing myself included so I thought I could show you two things today so I'm using my Klingon brush just like an amazing makeup brush very much worth the investment and it's not really an investment, I think these ones are about $27, so um, this has had a really hard life. This is probably a year old and, you know, I do this for a living, so it's definitely worth investing in. And between the, part, the brush and the amazing paint product, most of the work is done for you. And like I said, this is Fusion Mineral Paint. Um, I think it's called Lichen. So like with any paint, two thin coats is better than one thick coat. And your second coat is really just filling in those gaps. You can see how amazing the coverage of the first coat has been. If there's any questions, um, I'm live, so ask me them now because I won't be getting back on here probably till later tonight. Um, if you want to know anything about fusion mineral paint, painting furniture, what I had for breakfast, um, just ask. It's more fun when it's interactive, otherwise it's me looking at a camera. And I can see how many people are watching, by the way. I know you're there. So you see, like Fusion Mineral Paint as a product is self-leveling. So you don't have to worry about that built up look. If you're doing a white, unfortunately you might need to do three coats, maybe even four, depending on the surface that you start with. But you do those four coats and you can't tell. It's not like an acrylic paint where you can see layer upon layer and it looks really thick and um, oh, I don't know it just looks done by a machine so whereas fusion mineral paint is self leveling and the other happy thing with that is say something happens like say I move in the state and a huge piece of furniture falls on top of this one and I get a big dent all I need to do is fill in that little gap with my fusion mineral paint now on that subject, the paint is very hardy. It is really um, stickable, if that's a word. So it sticks and adheres to the surface really well. And you're going to see that in a minute when I show you how tricky it can be to distress back fusion mineral paint. Having said that, normal wear and tear is going to have an impact. It is still a painter's surface on wood and wood is a raw thing. If you put something on top of wood and you're going to be rough with it, it's going to chip and dent. Think of your car. You know, um, like our car is probably, I don't know, eight years old, so that paint's been stuck on there for ages. Someone gave my car a kiss, actually quite a big kiss, um, a blue car, and didn't leave a note. But 
I have a blue line and a big scratch on the side of my car. It all comes down to wear and tear. And if, you know, if these bedsides go into a granny and a grandpa's bedroom, they are going to wear better than if they go into my four and six year old children's bedroom. You know what I'm saying. But the happy news is, fusion is self leveling, so you can simply paint over it. And if I get to this point and say, two years later, I change my decor and I, all of a sudden I want these to be red, okay? All I do is exactly the same process. I give it a really nice, thorough light sand. Pretend it's dirty and you're wiping it down with a wet rag. A really good clean, get any of that grease and grime off there. And you paint over the top. So our coffee table in our living room, I think it's got about four different layers of paint on it. And you can't tell that I've been busy um, over the years changing my colour scheme, which is what I'm semi-famous for doing. I get bored very quickly. Right, how am I looking? Any spots? See how it dries a different colour too. Let's do this bit here. Then I'll flick you over to the other one and show you how to lightly distress with our sandy hand glove. Now this is a tricky part in here. Shove that brush in there. This is where I love the round brushes. You can really shove it in there. I find that the most versatile brushes is the 035. Now I don't want to paint too much there. So I'm going to try and leave that as natural as, um, as distressive as possible. A tiny bit more. A tiny bit more. And a tiny bit more. Okay, so once you've finished um, with that, if you know that you're going to distress, let me just get my brush. Um, if you know that you're going to distress, I would recommend, like in our Queensland warm environment, that you don't wait more than probably 20 minutes before you distress. Um, because fusion, as the name suggests, it's going to fuse onto the surface. So if you wait, like say, say you wait three days and think, oh, I'll distress that back now. It will happen, but it's going to be harder. And I don't know who wants to use extra muscle, not me. Now this is my sandy hands glove. So if you haven't seen them before, again, this one's over a year old. That you can get replacement pads. I've got the Velcro on there, see that? And then the pad which can be replaced. So they're really good because if you use normal sandpaper it damages your fingernails, it hurts your fingers um, and it kind of, you know, you'll be working along and then all of a sudden it flicks out of your hand. I find also they get really good control with these. I can kind of I call it feather, like feather over the furniture and get a really good feel for it. Now, how's your angle there, friends? Um, when I'm distressing, I only, generally speaking, distress along the uh, edges of things because that is where a piece of furniture would naturally wear and tear. I don't like the zebra look where, you know, a bit here and a bit here and a bit here. I'm a bit more of a natural distresser. Now I want to get in here to try and there's a bit of gold and black in here, so I'm wanting to accentuate that. Now I'm putting hardly any pressure at all. Like I said, feathery. Feather, feather. And it's coming off really lightly. So I know this is like a 240 grit. And I know that it's more than enough. If I was having problems taking it off, I would go up in grit, or maybe even up in force, but I know I don't want to. Just really lightly distressed. Now I'm just going to grab a screwdriver. Thanks Leti Leticia, I'm glad you love it. Um, Oh, might not be big enough. 
I caught myself out. Hang on, I want to open those doors. Sorry, that's a bit boring. Um, as I don't like using wax on the kids' piece of furniture, what's the best clear varnish type when you're wiping it? Okay, Jane, great question. Um, actually, why don't you like using wax on kids' furniture? That might be a place to start um, if you want to reply to that. But I will reply to your question. With fusion mineral paint, you have a built-in a built-in sealer. So you don't actually have to seal it with a wax or anything. The only time that they recommend that you do seal it is when it's a high traffic area such as kitchen, dining table and of course kids furniture. Um, but again, the most important thing with fusion mineral paint is the curing time. So it has a 28 day curing time which almost all paints do. If you give it that curing time and don't use it and you've done your prep and you've done two coats, you've waited your 12 hours, like you've done everything to the nth degree, it will wear beautifully. Our dining table is just knocked and bumped and the chairs and everything, like we're a family of six and we, we live in our environment, I'm not precious about it, too much stress, um, and it's wearing fine. It's that curing time that's more important. Um, now, if you do want to seal it for that extra protection, you can use a tough coat sealer. So this is the tough coat sealer. This is actually the antique tough coat sealer. So it has like a antiquing brown finish, which I absolutely love for my furniture. If you don't want to antique it, which I understand most people um, would prefer just a clear finish over their beautiful colour, you can use just the normal tough coat sealer. And it's a non-yellowing polyurethane. So you know, like if you go to your hardware shops, your varnishes and your polyurethanes have all got chemicals in them and we're putting that in our kids, kids um, environment. So the benefit with the Fusion one is that it's non-yellowing and it's got no chemicals in it. So um, Jane has replied because of the water marks from water bottles and etc. Um, I can't guarantee that that won't happen. Uh, the tops of these are painted so if, if your son put a, a cup on there and the condensation sat on there, you can't guarantee that's not going to happen. I suppose the way around it is to put down a placemat would probably be a better idea. Um, dining tables and things like that, I'd use a tough coat sealer. But Anything that has um, water pooling on it just isn't going to, to withstand. Like you think of your, your surface of your wood and then your paint on top. If you put a liquid on top of that, it's going to seep through your painted surface, no matter what painted surface it is. Think of your outside um, paint, you know, exterior paint on your houses, and that's just not going to hold up. So let me just screw this in. So I would like to show you the whole front one. Now these are cute little knobs and they're original so I try and recycle as much as I can and it was actually these knobs that made me, can you see them? It was these knobs that made me think of doing this colour because they're super super cute. They just screw in and I want to open this door. And I want to open this door. Sandy hand. And I'm just going along the edges. When you're distressing, you kind of step back and have a look and try and make it as even and authentic as possible. I love distressing back. 
the hardware if I paint over the hardware like that. But like I'm using my pointer now. <laughs> That's how soft I'm going. Alright, how are we looking? That door is happy for me, maybe a bit here. Along the edge there. Oh, good. Sorry, lock it off for a minute. A little bit more on this side. Thanks, Lisa Marie. I'm glad you love it. A little bit along here. A bit along the edge here. And I am feeling happy. Okay, so if you compare, I'm not sure how the glare is for you, but if we compare the look of the distressed one, see how it just. I don't know, it just makes it look more homely, I suppose, a bit more friendly when they're distressed. I love distressing compared to the neat and complete. I just feel like there's less character in them. All right, I'm going to keep going with these. I also have a ginormous bed head, which I'm hoping to do a live because that's with Sweet Pickens Milk Paint, and I'm showing you how I have cheated and I've done. Um, fusion underneath to create a new fake timber look. I'm hoping to do that live for you today as well. I find it really hard to get a flow on for lives but today is the day. Um, and then I've got Sweet Pickens Milk Paint orders to pack so a full day for me. Lucky I've got my drink bottle and my chicken cream piece handy. Have a happy Thursday. Any questions let me know. I'll get back to you later. Bye guys. Bye.